Hi, Mitch Dodd from Downing Lock, electric retract conversions. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the reassembly of the car Corsair folding wing mechanism after conversion by Downing Lock. Uh, these systems obviously are naturally or normally a hydraulically actuated and most of these customers are finding reason to send these in and have them operated by electrics because of the weight savings and the lack of complications. Anyway, first we want to acknowledge what the various components are or what we're going to refer to them as. This being the fixed portion of your folding wing mechanism that would most likely be permanently or mostly permanently attached to your wing center section. This is the moving portion of the folding mechanism. This is a pivot pin. This is a locking pin. This is the threaded steel shaft or steel shaft, actuator housing, jack screw, and beneath these brackets right here is a threaded pin. Now, first thing that you're going to do when you receive this back from us after conversion, this is how it's going to look. It's going to be shipped to you in this configuration, assembled in this manner. Now, you're going to have to disassemble this to reinstall in your plane. If you will notice on this bracket here, on the side that has this connector webbing that connects the lower, uh, lower and upper portions, that is on one side. It's offset to one side. I'm sorry, it's offset to one side. Now, the bracket on this side has one screw that is going to be labeled with an arrow. The purpose of this arrow is to denote the fact that this screw does not have a thread locker because you're going to have to remove it. Upon reassembly, you need to use a thread locker in this. Now, on the opposite side, you have the same bracket, but this side you have four screws with arrows. Neither of these four screws have thread locker for, to, to ease in your disassembly. Again, when you reassemble, you're going to have to use a thread locker on these four screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart as you just took it out of the box uh, from shipping from us and preparing to put it back in your plane. The first thing you're going to do is remove the lower screw and acknowledge that it is of a shorter length than what these three will be. There will be two of those short screws, one on each side in this position. These three here are slightly longer. Remove the bracket off, turn it over, remove this screw, only this one on this side. Again, this is a second of two short screws. Take this bracket away from your mechanism. You're going to remove this pivot pin with a 3 seconds Allen wrench. Remove the pin out of the moving portion of that. You're going to remove this bracket, which is a locking bracket that was originally built or supplied built into or supplied with your folding wing mechanism. Inside of this locking pin, there is a set screw which requires a 564 Allen wrench. You're going to go down inside that threaded hole and loosen. You do not remove it, just loosen it. The purpose of that is to keep this assembly, this actuator assembly, to prevent it from rotating in this locking bra brass locking pin. Obviously, if this is allowed to rotate in that brass pin, then it's not going to turn the jack screw, which is responsible for the moving of the wing up and down. So, we will refer to this set screw in here as an anti-rotation set screw, whatever way you want to call it, but that's, ultimately that's what its purpose is. So you've loosened this set screw. You're going to remove the locking brass pin from the actuator assembly. The next step you're going to take is you're going to put this locking brass pin shoulder this side through your fixed bracket. 
Now the side that you put the shoulder through from is the one opposite of this little shear pin or a locking pin right here. So you put it through this way, shoulder opposite of this, this pin. Now, you're going to take your actuator assembly and thread it back into the brass locking pin. I'm going to back up here one second and I'm going to show you something that I didn't do. One of the key factors here and the main purpose of this video is so that when people reassemble this they get the adjustment or the travel lengths correct. If you thread this assembly, this actuator assembly, into this brass locking pin too far, you can see the steel threads will be sticking beyond the radius of the locking pin. This has got to be at or below a level plane with the radius of this brass locking pin. Not on the top, on the sides. You see, I can make it level at the top section, but I'm still protruding beyond the radius on the sides. So you have to have it down at or below the radius on the sides. Now, we'll go ahead and assemble this as I had started doing just seconds ago. Again, the shoulder is going to go in from the opposite side of the locking pin. You will hold it, thread the actuator assembly into the brass locking pin, thread it in to a point to where your sides of your steel threads are pretty much flush with the brass pin inside. Again, you see if I go too far, we'll start to see that protruding out. So we're going to back it up to a point to where it's pretty much flush on the sides. Now, taking your fixed portion of the bracket, again, this webbing is offset to one side of this frame. Likewise, this bracket that you have left on is on the same side as the webbing. So take that and your, wrote your pivot pin. Assemble this in this way. You're just going to basically, I'll lay it down here where it's more easy to see. All you're doing is you're laying this down, laying that on the, the side of this web to where you can access it. You're going to then insert the pivot pin, sometimes more easier said than done, insert it into place as such. Now, the next step, put your wires untangled. You can run this threaded pin out just a little bit. You're going to insert it into, and again I want to show you, this threaded pin has about a 80,000 shoulder machined onto it. We're going to pause on this video and we're going to go to a second one so that we stay within our YouTube time frame. Okay. 